And here's our last of examples of how to work with exponents in algebra. Now you can see that things look like they're getting a little complicated, but again, if we follow the rules closely, it's not really a problem. All right, looking at the first one here, what I like to do is I like to bring all the negative exponents to the bottom, if there's negative exponents in the numerator, and take any negative exponents in the denominator and move them to the numerator. That's my first step. Now, we don't have to do it like that, but it makes things a little bit easier for me. Um, also, we look 12 divided by, 40, uh, by 48. You can see that 12 goes into 48 four times, so we can divide the numerator and the denominator by 12, so that it becomes 1, this becomes 4. So we get 1 fourth, and then we have an x squared in the numerator, a y to the minus 4, that comes to the denominator, becomes y to the positive 4, and z to the minus 5 comes to the denominator, makes it z to the uh, positive 5 power. So I've moved these two down to the denominator, gave them positive exponents. Then here we have an x to the minus 3, that can go to the numerator, becomes an x to the positive 3, the y squared stays down here, and the z to the third power stays down there. All right, next step is whenever the base are the same and I multiply, simply add the exponents together. So this becomes uh, x to the 2 plus 3 divided by 4 times y to the 2 plus 4 and z to the 5 plus 3. Simply adding them together, I get x to the 5th power divided by 4, y to the 6th power, z to the 8th power, and we're done. All right, next example. Notice how the whole thing in parentheses is raised to negative 2 power. What I can do is make that into a positive 2 power and simply flip the, um, the fraction around. So this becomes 5x to the minus 2, yz to the minus 4, divided by 4x squared, y cubed, z, all raised to the positive 2 power. Again, we don't have to do that, but again, negative exponents are not fun to work with, so I like to get rid of them first. Next thing, I'm going to move these two down to the denominator and turn them into a positive exponent. So uh, this becomes 5, the y stays, because that has a positive 1 exponent, divided by 4, x squared, y cubed, z. That, those are all positive exponents. And then bring the x to the minus 2 and the z to the minus 4 down. That becomes x to the positive 2 and z to the positive 4 power. The whole thing is still raised to the second power. Next, I'm going to combine like terms, or I shouldn't say like terms, but I'm going to multiply the same bases and then add exponents. So we have 5y in the numerator divided by 4x to the 2 plus 2 power. We have y cubed by itself, and then we have z here and a z there, so that becomes z to the 1 plus 4 power. The whole thing is still raised to the second power. Next, I can go ahead and add these together. So this is equal to 5y divided by 4x to the fourth, y cubed, and z to the fifth power. And then the whole thing is raised to the second power. And now I'm ready to go ahead and apply this exponent to everything that's inside of parentheses. So this is equal to 5 squared, that's 25 y to the, now we can see that's y to the first power raised to the second power, that's 1 times 2, or second power divided by 4 squared is 16. We have x to the fourth power raised to the second power, that's 4 times 2 is 8, so x to the eighth power. y to the third power raised to the second power, that's y to the 3 times 2, or y to the sixth. And finally, z to the fifth power raised to the second power, that's z to the 5 times 2, or 10. And that's the answer for that one. Okay, now look at this. We have something in parentheses, multiply times this, and notice that this is raised to a negative exponent. I'm going to turn that into a positive exponent and flip the fraction around. When I do that, I get x to the minus 4, y to the minus 2, z divided by x to the 0 power, y to the minus 3, z to the minus 1. Notice that I didn't start doing other things. I like to do one step at a time, so to make sure I don't make mistakes, and then I'm going to flip this whole thing around. So this becomes x to the minus 4 power, y to the minus 1, z to the minus 2, all divided by uh, minus 2. Ooh, does it matter if the minus is here, the minus is there? Not really. You can leave it anywhere you like. I just brought it down with the 2. Um, x to the minus 2 power, y, z to the third power. All I did was simply flip the fraction around, and now this becomes the positive 1 power. Of course, I don't have to write positive 1 power, but just for clarity to see how I changed one from there to there by flipping this fraction around. Next thing, I'm going to move all the 
all the um, variables that have a negative exponent to the bottom or to the top, depending upon where they are. So this is equal to. In the numerator, I already have a z, so that stays where it is. In the denominator, I have an x to the 0 power. Well, that becomes 1. A y to the minus 3 power moves to the top. That becomes y to the third power. And a z to the minus 1 power from the denominator moves to the top, becomes z to the first power. And the x to the minus 4 power in the numerator comes down. That becomes x to the positive 4 power. And the y to the minus 2 power becomes y to the positive 2 power. So all I did here was simply move anything in the numerator with negative exponents to the denominator. Anything in the denominator with exponents moved it to the numerator. All right. Same over here. I have a, these all are negative exponents, so they all come down to the denominator, x to the fourth, y to the first power, z to the second power. And, oop, I should leave a little bit of room because what I just noticed was that there are already two items here that do not have a negative exponent, so they stay where they are. The x to the minus 2 power goes to the numerator, becomes x to the positive 2 power, and I still have a minus 2 here, so don't forget the minus 2. And close parentheses. All right. Now, simplifying things, uh, you know, so anytime I see the same base, I simply add exponents. So this becomes uh, y cubed uh, z squared divided by x to the fourth y squared. And over here, I get an x squared in the numerator, and I have a minus 2 x to the fourth in the denominator, then I have a y times a y, which is a y squared in the denominator, and a z squared times z cubed, which is z to the fifth. All right, I made my line a little bit too long here. Make it a little shorter. Okay, stay with me, we're almost done. So now, again, it really doesn't matter if those parentheses are there, they were just there for clarity. We can probably now go ahead and drop them because we're just multiplying everything together. Uh, now you can see that we have um, a y cubed, a z squared, an x squared, and a numerator. Here we have an x to the fourth, y squared. We have an x to the fourth, and y squared. Why don't we multiply the denominator together and add these exponents? So this becomes, we have uh, an x squared, a y cubed, and a z squared. So notice that I moved the x squared to the left side here uh, and wrote it in, in alphabetical ascending order, so to speak. I have a minus 2 in the denominator, which stays there. I have an x to the 4th and x to the 4th. That becomes x to the 8th. Remember, when we multiply and the base are the same, we add exponents. We have a y squared and a y squared. That becomes y to the 4th. And then we have a z to the 5th here. OK, almost done. Now we have x's, y's, and z's in the numerator and denominator. So the rule is, when we divide, we subtract the exponents from the denominator. So let's do that. So this now becomes uh, x to the 2 minus 8. We have a y to the 3 minus 4. And we have a z to the 2 minus 5. And the whole thing is divided by the negative 2, which stays in the denominator. So this becomes equal to x to the minus 6, y to the minus 1, z to the minus 3, all divided by minus 2. And then all this, I end up with negative exponents again, which is not a problem. We'll bring those to the denominator, change them to positive exponents, so this becomes 1 over negative 2 times x to the 6th, y to the 1st, and z to the 3rd power. We don't really have to write y to the 1st. We can just kind of leave that off, make it a little cleaner. And that's how you do that. Now notice there's probably a dozen ways in which you can go from here to there, as long as you follow the rules. It's not a problem. Any method will work. I simply do this for illustration. You can see that there's various ways in which you can manipulate these expressions to the point where you can simplify them to its simplest form. Okay, go, get, go ahead and give these a try. And good luck.